And then I'm going to share my screen so we can start on our review. So the review is uh, 22 questions. And out of these 22, I got 20 of them on my test. All right, so number one says a commuter train travels 66 kilometers in 43 minutes. They want to know what is the speed in kilometers per hour. So I'm going to start out with 66 kilometers per 43 minutes. So remember, per minute division. All right, y'all, hang on. I had to get my conversion sheet here. All right, let me let it listen in real quick. All right, so I need conversions between minutes and hours because we're already in kilometers and that's what they wanted to um, speed to end in. So actually, we didn't even need the sheet for that one, right? Because we know that there are 60 minutes equals one hour. So we're going to get this to convert out in hours, so we need to cancel the minutes. So we're going to put our 60 minutes on the top equal to one hour on the bottom. So now the minutes cancel and I'm going to end up in kilometers per hour, which is what they wanted. So y'all, we're going to multiply that top. So you would do uh, 66 times 60 on the top and then divide by the 43 that's on the bottom. So everything on top, multiply, and then divide by everything on the bottom. And let's see, they say round to the nearest tenth. So that's one decimal place. So we got, what, a 92.09. So I'm going to round it where the zero is. Since nine is five or larger, we're going to turn the zero into a one. So we would get 92.1 kilometers per hour, which would be the choice A. So you put in a number and then it'll click up an answer box and you just click which one your units were in, okay? So the key word there is what they're wanting here, kilometers per hour. That means kilometers on top, hours on the bottom. All right, they want us to restate the fact so the national debt was about 6.69 trillion at the end of 2003. Express this quantity as the number of dollars per person. And then it says, assume the population was 280 million. So if they want it done per person, since this is the entire population, what we would do is take that 6.9 trillion and we're basically going to divide it by how many people we got, which is 280 million. So y'all remember this, trillions and millions are different place values. So let's do this on the bottom. 6.9 trillion, you could write that as 6.9 times 10 to the 12. So we made a chart one day that had uh, metric values and then we used the exponents to represent trillions. For millions, we did 280 times 10 to the 6. So millions are 10 to the 6, trillions are 10 to the 12th, billions would be 10 to the 9th. So we're going to divide 6.9. So if you remember on the calculator, you could do 6.9 second 
comma to get the E. And then that means times 10. So then you put the exponent, which is 12. Divide that by the bottom, which is 280. Second comma to get the E. And then that exponent is a six. So we're going to hit enter. And the calculator is giving me 24642. Uh, it looks like they're rounding it to the nearest sense. So that looks like what? Eight, five is going to round up to a six. So we get $24,642.86. And that's now per person. So you take the total debt divide by the total number of people and get that answer. Now y'all, you could have wrote 6.9 trillion out as six comma nine zero zero comma zero 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 comma. And then looks like I got three more zeros. So that'd be, that'd be, uh, let me see where I'm at. Thousands. Millions, billions, yeah, I'm in the trillions. Divide that by 280 million. Oh, what it didn't, oh, I don't like these commas. All right, and you still get 24,642. So you can write them out as numbers or you can use these scientific notations, okay? All right, write the number in scientific notation. So we're starting with 4,011,000. At the moment, the decimal is at the end. So to write this in scientific notation, the first non-zero number is a four. So we're gonna move that decimal behind that four. And it took me one, two, three, four, five, six moves. So since I went to the left, that's gonna make my exponent positive when I rewrite this. So I'm gonna rewrite this as four. Oh, I forgot my, these are ones here actually, right? So 4.011 times 10. So we moved it six times, we said, so that makes the exponent a positive six. Now, so we would have got a, so watch this, 4.011 second E, that was a six, if you hit enter, you'll get 4,011,000 and whatever. All these would give you the wrong answers if you punched them in, okay? So we have to go with A on that one. All right, same thing, number four. Write this number in scientific notation. At the moment, my decimal is behind that last zero. So we need to move it behind the first non-zero number, which is a two. So we're gonna move it one, two, three, four times. So that's gonna give me 2.3 times 10. Since I moved it left four units, that's gonna make my exponent a positive four. Now y'all, I'll show you what's cool about this calculator. I can punch in 23,000. Up here where it says mode, if I hit mode, and right now it's blinking on normal, I'm gonna arrow right and put it on psi, which means scientific notation, and hit enter. Now it's highlighting scientific notation. So when I clear the screen and I punch in that 23,000, if I hit enter, it's going to give me 2.3 times 10 to the fourth. All right, let me clock one in real quick. Now, I could have did that on that 4 million. Watch, 4011. Zero, zero, zero. So that was the problem I had while go. Since I put the calculator in side mode, when I hit enter, it gives me 4.01 times 10 to the six. So that calculator will 
we'll convert this scientific notation really quick for you. All right, question on that. All right, y'all, number five here says, identify the fallacy. Each of my brother's dogs, three dogs has fleas. Therefore, all dogs have fleas. So remember, straw man was uh, more the political type stuff. Circular reasoning, it meant the same thing. False cause, we went over, and then hasty generalization. So on that one, I picked hasty generalization. Because just because your three dogs have fleas does not mean that all dogs have fleas, okay? y'all, let's see what this says. Uh, can carry out the indicated conversion, round our answer if appropriate. Convert a weight of 17 pounds into ounces. So we're going to start with 17 pounds. And they want me to convert that to ounces. And they're telling me right here, 16 ounces equals one pound. So since I need to cancel the pounds and turn them to ounces, the one pound has to go to the bottom and then the 16 ounces goes to the top. So now we canceled out them pounds and we'll be left with ounces. And this one, since they're both on top, you're going to multiply 17 times 16. Also, if I don't want my answer in scientific notation, I'm gonna go back to mode real quick and highlight normal. That way, when I put my answers, I get actual numbers. So 17 times 16 was what? 272 ounces. So that would be C. So a lot of these, they'll give you the conversions. If not, we'll use that little sheet I had, okay? So convert the temperature as indicated. So I'm starting with 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And they want me to convert that. So let's see. I'm going from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So let me get my formulas real quick. Oh, and I taught y'all instead of using fractions, we'll use the, um, the decimal. So your two formulas, Fahrenheit equals 1.8 Celsius plus 32. For Celsius, it's going to equal to Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by the 1.8. So notice what they wanted me to do. They want me to turn 80 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius. So I'm going to use my Celsius formula, which is Celsius equals my Fahrenheit, which is 80, minus my 32 divided by 1.8. So let's work the top first. 80 minus 32 gives us 48. And then we'll divide the 48 by the 1.8. So y'all, I'm getting what? 26.666. So let's see how they rounded this off. So they went two decimal places. So we had 0.6666. So we'll round it off to the 26.67. So I will say this. If you do this kind of problem on the calculator and you want to do it in one step, put parentheses around that top. 
So in the calculator, you would punch parentheses, 80 minus 32, close those parentheses, and then divided by the 1.8, and I'll still get 26.666. So if you do it in the calculator, parentheses around the top. So y'all don't go either way on that. So you'll want both them formulas for that, okay? Let's see this one. Uh, use units to help you answer the question. Round two decimal places. A stockbroker sold 50 shares of stock for 14.42 each. What was the total amount of the sale? So basically what I did, I said, okay, they took 14.42 per share. And remember, we want to come up with amounts. So we noticed we sold 50 shares. So if it's 14.42 a share, you multiply by the 50 shares, that way your shares cancel. And all you got to do to this problem is multiply to 14.42 times the 50, which is giving me what, 721? All that's left is dollars. And that looks like, so I didn't have no cents left in it. No, mine was perfect. So go with C. But y'all be careful on this one. Look, A has a point 10. And if you don't watch close, you click that one, they're going to get you, okay? Oh, here's one. We've done a lot of conversions. So they're basically telling you one U.S. dollar equals 12.73 pesos. And that's on our sheet, I think. Uh, let's see, we had pesos. Well, on our sheet, they're like $21 each. So, so we'll use their conversion. So they're asking me, how much would 540 US dollars be worth in Mexican pesos? So we start with our 540 US dollars. Here's my conversion for every US dollar is 12.73 pesos. So for every one US dollar, 12.73 pesos. So notice the dollars now cancel. You're left with pesos, which is what we needed. So we're just basically going to multiply the 540 times 12.73. And looks like we're going around, uh, their answers are around in two. So since we ended up with a 0.2, we would add a zero after the two and make that a 0.20. So we would get 6874.20, which is C. Y'all, B and D, $540 would only turn into 990 and 848 peso money. Woo, that's way off. And this one looks like they doubled it basically. Um, but remember, it was like 12 times more, okay? So Multiply on that one, and then you'll get that one knocked out. So questions on this page. All right, y'all, so moving on. Identify the fallacy again. When confronted with questions from the press about alleged scandals, a congressman replies that the allegations against him should be ignored since his accuser is part of a vast right-wing conspiracy. So look at these four choices and tell me what y'all would pick out on number 10. Personal attack. Personal attack. All right, so personal attack online. Good job. 
All right, write the number in ordinary notation. So this is where you're gonna start with the number. And at the moment, we know the decimal is behind the three because there's not one. And I'm gonna write it in ordinary notation. So when exponents are positive, you move the decimal to the right. Because remember, 10 to the six is like a million. So this better be at least a million or more when you're done. So move it right six, which means you're going to add a lot of zeros. So I moved it six places to the right. So let's see, that's going to be what? About three, looks like three million. So we would go with D. Now, sometimes the calculator will do these depending on how big your numbers are. So let's see if it'll do millions. So I'm gonna punch in three. To get the times to the 10, you're gonna hit second, comma, to get the E. And then the exponent was a six. So let's see if it'll write that out. It wrote it out and it gave us our three million. Now, I think if them exponents get up to like nine, 12, a lot of times it'll leave them in scientific notation, okay? Oh, here's another fallacy, number 12. Identify the fallacy. You should brush your teeth every day because brushing your teeth is very important. So diversion, hasty generalization, circular reasoning, or false cause? Circular reasoning. Yeah, let me see what that chat said. Uh, both y'all got circular reasoning, uh -huh. good job. Mm-hmm. And I think we actually did examples like that one. Um, after getting new dishes, I started to sneeze. I must be allergic to the new dishes. <laughs> so that one's not bad. Which one is it? False cause. False cause. <laughs> I think we did some like the... Uh, Went to the burger shop. I got sick after I ate the burgers. So the burger yeah. caused me to get sick and some of them. Uh -huh. All right, y'all pull that down so we can see all four of these answers. So now they're wanting to convert negative 20 Celsius into Fahrenheit. So negative 20 degrees Celsius. So that was the other formula I had written for you. So to go to Fahrenheit will equal 1.8 times the Celsius temperature plus 32. So they're giving us negative 20. So we're going to put that in. So 1.8 times negative 20 plus 32. So you can punch all that in at once on your calculator or do it in steps. If you do steps, you got to multiply first. So 1.8 times negative 20. So since that's a negative number, use that negative that's down here in the parentheses. And then you're going to add 32. So I get a negative four. Now notice they're rounding over here to the nearest hundredth. So you would have to add two zeros to get that to the nearest hundredth, okay? Um, but it's multiple choice. So if you got negative four, you would know to use negative 4.00. So notice you're going to have to convert both ways on these. So you want both them formulas for sure. All right, let me go back up a little bit more. Convert to temperature, so same thing. We're starting with negative 15 degrees Celsius. We're gonna turn that into Fahrenheit. So remember, Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times that negative 15 plus 32. So y'all, I'm gonna punch that one in. 1.8 times negative 15 plus 32. That's gonna give me five degrees, which we know would be 5.00. So let's see, they gave us that for D. 
So you know, it's not a bad test. It's just got a little bit of conversions, okay? Same thing you hear, round our answer to the nearest tenth. So they want me to turn 96 kilometers per hour, and they want me to turn that to miles per hour. So that one, I probably would use my sheet because we got distance on this and we need kilometers and miles. So if you notice down here, you got US and metric. So you got two choices. You can use one mile is 1.6093 kilometers, or you could use one kilometer is 0.6214 miles. So let's see, since I'm going to go from kilometers to miles, I'm going to use the one right here that says one kilometer equals 6.6214 miles. So one kilometer equals 0 0.6214 miles. So that one was actually on your sheet. So remember, I need to cancel the kilometers. So this one has to go to the bottom and then 0 0.6214 miles goes to the top. That way, after I cancel the kilometers, my units will be miles on top over hours like we needed. So y'all, since those are both on top, you're gonna to multiply 96, times 0.6214, that's gonna give me 59.654. They want it in the nearest tenths, so that's where the six is. So I'm gonna round that up to a seven. Oh, hold on, did I punch in my numbers wrong? Oh, my bad, that's 95 miles per hour. I mean, that's 95, woo. Okay, I was wondering why we wasn't on there. So that's a 95 right there. So y'all, 95 times 0.6214 gives me 59.03, since three is less than five, that's gonna stay at 59.0. So that would be, miles per hour now. So let's find 59, that'll be B. And they sort of told you what the units would have to be miles per hour when you were done on that one, okay? All right, y'all, let's see. Whoa, another temperature, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna turn this one into Celsius. So remember, Celsius equaled Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. So they're giving me a Fahrenheit of 60. So it's going to be 60 minus 32 divided by 1.8. I'm going to do that on my calculator. So I'm going to put parentheses around that top. So here we go. Parentheses, 60 minus 32, close parentheses divided by 1.8. We're gonna hit enter, and that's gonna give me round to the nearest hundred. So that's gonna be 15.5. So the five in the hundreds has a five behind it. So we're gonna round that up to a six. So that'll be 15.56 degrees Celsius. So y'all, that would be B. All right, so y'all good on those, going through those conversions? So next, we're gonna multiply, add, and divide scientific notation. Now really, I will say, multiplying and dividing, those ones weren't bad, but your tricks on that adding, 
their little trick here, okay? So, by hand, since I'm multiplying, you come in and multiply three times two. Three times two gives me six, and then it's gonna be times 10. Since we're multiplying, we add the exponents. So seven plus three gives me 10. So that answer is six times 10 to the 10. Now watch this on the calculator. I'm gonna do three. To get the times to the 10 part, I hit second comma. That gives me the E. First exponent was a seven. Then we're gonna multiply by the second number, which is two, second comma to get to times 10. That exponent was a three. Y'all, I'm gonna hit enter. And my answer is six times 10 to the 10. So just remember, the E is this part and they're giving you that exponent when you look on the calculator. So B, the easiest way to add is to turn them into ordinary numbers. And then once you got the ordinary number, add them, get that answer, and then turn that answer back into scientific notation. So if you got two times 10 to the fourth, you're adding four zeros. We're now going to add that with six times 10 to the three. So that'll be a six with three zeros. The exponents are telling you how many zeros are following them numbers. So y'all add that together. You get 26,000, but remember, you got to turn this back into scientific notation. So the first non-zero number is a two. So you're going to move to decimal one, two, three, four units to the left. So that'll be 2.6 times 10 to the fourth. So since you're going from standard to scientific, if you move left, then the exponent's positive. So y'all, we got 2.6 times 10 to the fourth. Now the calculator can do these quick. I would do two second comma, that had an exponent of four, plus six second comma to get the E, exponent three, if I hit enter, it gives me 26,000, but remember, if you wanted to convert it to scientific notation, just hit mode, highlight psi on it, clear that screen, and when you hit enter, you get 2.6 times 10 to the fourth. So I'll keep it in scientific since this next one's scientific, but this stuff ain't bad. Six divided by three, Six divided by three is two. Then I'm gonna write times to the 10. Since you're dividing, what am I gonna to do to those exponents? I got an exponent Subtract. nine and an exponent three. Subtract them. Subtract them. So let's see, nine minus three leaves me what a six. So that's just gonna be what? Two times 10 to the six. All right, now I'll do this one on the calculator real quick. Six second comma to get the EE e, that had exponent nine divided by three, second comma to get the E, that was a three. And there you go, two times 10 to the six. So y'all will love those calculators. Now, let me just tell you this. If you don't have a TI-84 calculator, you can go to your Apple, app store your uh what's the other one android wherever y'all get your apps from download the ti-84 calculator app it'll do the same thing mine's doing okay all right getting down to my last four so it looks like 19 says uh identify the fallacy if proposition 
she fails, your children won't have good schools. So think about it. They're talking about your children. And they're basing this off of the fact that hopefully you really, 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 really love your children. So they are trying to appeal to my emotion. Emotion. There you go. So that was the one when we was doing the exercises I was telling y'all about the the Michelin tires because so much is riding on your tires and they have a picture of a baby sitting inside them tires. Right. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's see here. Carry out the conversion. Round our answer. Convert a distance of 13 miles into yards. So we're starting with 13 miles. And they're telling us what there is. They're saying, hey, there's 1,760 yards in one mile. So since we're... Con canceling out these miles and turning them to yards, that one mile has to go to the bottom to cancel and the 1760 yards will go to the top. So miles are canceling. So let's see what we get. 13 times 1760. Oh, so I'm in, uh, let me go back my mode. Let me go back to normal, enter, enter, and then clear. So how about 22,880 yards, 22,880, and that's now in yards. So let's see, we got that over here, that would be B. Well, they put some really close answers on some of these, and then some it's like they lose off, they leave off a zero or so. All righty, this one says fallacy again. A television commercial shows two people who fall in love while wearing a certain brand of blue jeans. So then blue jeans made y'all fall in love. What are we doing? Emotions. There you go. Feel the emotion. <laughs> Don't be fooled. We had two of them on there, but that's yeah. all right. Had to look them over good. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> But anytime they're talking about love, your children, you know, trying to get them emotions. Yeah. All right, so we want to turn, woo, five weeks into seconds. So we're going to start with five weeks. And right off the bat, I don't know the conversion from weeks to seconds, but I know how to get there. I know that for every one week, that is what, seven days? So I'm gonna cancel my weeks and it turns into days now. I now know that for every one day is 24 hours. So my days are canceled and I'm now in hours. Woo, we're getting all the way to seconds. So for every one hour, we know that there is 60 minutes. So my hours are canceling. I'm in minutes now. And then finally, I know for every one minute, there is 60 seconds. So my minutes cancel. And I'll finally be in seconds. All the big numbers are on top. So we're going to go along and multiply everything together. Five times seven times 24 times 60 times 60 gives me a total of whoa, what is that three million zero twenty four thousand so three million twenty four thousand and that's now in seconds so let's see they got that oh that's our a right there and be done. So y'all, that is your study guide for test one. Practice that before you actually do the test. Now remember my test is 20 of these questions, but it's gonna be 
one of these kind of questions. All we're going to do is maybe change the miles and the yards or how many miles you start with and stuff like that, okay? These fallacies, you can't change them too much. They're going to stay similar no matter what. All right, so let me see how I'm doing on my time. So, so what I want to do now is just show y'all how y'all can access um, Excel for free on y'all's accounts. And that way, next class, we're going to play that game I was telling you about. So I just wanted to sort of show you what we're going to do with that. So I'm going to quit this share. All right, click over. Um, so all y'all got a Plasky Tech email. So I'm gonna pull something up real quick before I share it. Um, looks like I'm gonna have to refresh my portal. All right, so I'm gonna get us through my portal real quick into the email. All right, so I'm gonna click email. So is it showing y'all my email trying to open up? Yes. Okay. So it's following me too. Good job. So apparently home internet ain't as fast as school internet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so not sure if y'all know this, but if you look on the left side of the screen where I'm sort of moving my cursor, those nine dots up there in the left corner, do y'all see those? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you click on that, it opens up all the apps that y'all got access to since you're in the Outlook system. All right, open up. My internet's just slow. to make it wide. Oh, you see how it pulled up all the apps over here? <laughs> um, if you'll go down, you'll see Excel is one of your options. So y'all, you got access to Word, PowerPoint, uh, all kinds of stuff using these apps. So just click on Excel. So now it's going to take you into a blank Excel page. And what I'm going to do is sort of show y'all how I would set up my battleship game so that when y'all come on Wednesday, you'll know how to do this part and we'll let y'all play battleship. So I'm going to click a new blank workbook. Are y'all seeing what I'm seeing? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it should be sh pulling up a blank Microsoft Excel worksheet. Okay, so y'all should be seeing the grid lines and everything now. Right. 
Okay, so what I do on this, I modify this so that it gives us like a game board so that you can go through and call spaces like E3, E4, and whatever. And if it hits our little ships, we, we consider them being sunk. So y'all watch what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to highlight. I'm going to make this about a 10 by 10. So I'm going to go over here 10 spaces to the right. And then I'm going to drag that down to 10 on here. So I've now highlighted that. If you notice above up here, you got a paint can. And then you got an A with a color line under it. The paint can lets you fill in colors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on that paint can arrow. It got a run its course. And she's going to, and I'm going to make my water blue. So I'm just going to pick one of these blues that looks like water. I'm going to click on that. So now I got water. I'm also going to right click in here and it pulls up this box. The one with the little uh, I should have pulled up my Excel. All right, right above here, there's a little, you see where I'm clicking, it says borders. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna click an arrow. It's gonna pull all the borders. I'm gonna to go to this one that says all borders and click that. So that makes my little grid lines. Now, we want these to be nice, pretty squares. So watch what I'm about to do. This is all highlighted still. Over here on the left side, can y'all see my hand? I'm gonna click that little triangular looking thing. I'm gonna come down here on number one. Oh, where are you doing it? All right, let me click out again. Okay. Y'all seen how that's, so watch me. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna make them a little bit taller so it looks more like squares. But I come up here to that triangle and I clicked it. And then I come down to the one until you see them little lines. That's telling me I'm gonna adjust the height. So let me go a little bit taller for that. So now it looks more like a 10 by 10 grid, okay? So now here's A1, B1 going across the top and then they go down to, oh, I made 11, I should have went to 10, but oh, well, we're gonna have a 10 by 11 game, I guess. So watch this, I'm gonna come over here on the right, what I did, I'm just clicking anywhere. I'm clicking and dragging my mouse so it makes it too wide. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna merge these cells and center. So when you merge it, it makes this like one big cell. You see how it's now one big cell right here? <laughs> I'm gonna call this, uh, let me make these words bigger. I'm gonna make this about 20. So watch this, this is gonna be my tugboat. So I'm gonna call it the tug. Now, I'm gonna stay in there and I'm gonna color my tugboat. I'm gonna click this paint can up here and I'm gonna color my tugboat sort of gold looking. Now, I'm gonna highlight three column, three cells. I'm gonna merge them real quick. 
So merge and center. This one I'm going to color. What color is a submarine? Submarines are gray, gray. right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to color my submarine gray. I'm going to make my words 20 on that one. Now, I'm probably not going to see it if I do black. So what I'm going to do is highlight that black. Yeah, you can see that, I guess. Now, my third ship, I'm going to highlight four rows, merge and center. Uh, make my words 20 on this one. This is going to be my battleship. So what color we want this battleship? They probably sort of gray too, but we'll make this one. What did y'all say, white? Somebody said white. <laughs> we'll go with this color gray. How about that? Sub gray, dark, battleship. But watch this. I'm going to highlight the tug. You see how that's got, when I click up by the border, it's got arrows. Yeah. I'm going to drag my tug into the game board. Submarine, I'm going to click on submarine, go up by the borders till you get them arrows. And I'm going to drive, I'm going to put my sub sort of by my tug. And then battleship, I'm going to click on battleship, go up near the border. And my battleship's being protected by them too. So I'm going to put my battleship right there. So y'all are going to make a game board each, okay? Then, so now that we, now you will only know your board and they'll only know their board, right? Right. So you're going to name off A1. So I come over here, A1 inside that cell, there's no boat. So that's a miss. And you're going to rotate back and forth. But if they say C3, well, in the C row, come down to three. In C3, I got my tug. So that would be a hit. So that means they hit my tug. So what I would do, click in that tug, and I'm just going to color red, red, because it's dead, right? Right. And then you just play, you know. So that's just going to be a little activity we're going to do just to get some activity points and for y'all to experience a little bit of Microsoft Excel. Um, have y'all all used Excel before? I have. No. So see, it'll be sort of new because see, we can do stuff in, in Microsoft Excel. We're going to do our budget stuff. So we'll create columns, you know, for our income, our expenses. And we're going to have Excel figure out the formulas for us. Y'all watch, watch this. I'll show you a little trick. Um, say right here, I put in, say I made $2,000 this month. So that would be my income. Say over here. My house costs me eight fifty a month, say. My groceries might be two fifty a month. And then power, let's say two hundred on my power. So that's just some of my expenses. But watch this in Excel, I can come into this W cell and put a formula. So a formula you would put equals is the first thing you put. So I got an equals in there. Now I'm telling this answer here, I want this answer to be this column right here, minus my rent, minus my groceries, minus my electric bill. So I want that cell to equal those. Oh, hold on, I did something went wild on it. All right, let me delete. I move my cursor. All right, so this cell is going to equal that one minus this one minus. Ah! 
Hang on. I know what the issue is. I'm using my number stuff, but my number stuff ain't. I got to put number lock on, I guess. All right, number lock's on. All right, so I'm going to delete this. So come up, put your equals, and it's going to equal this column minus this column minus this column minus this column. We hit enter. It gives you how much money is left. So we can put in amounts and let Excel sort of figure out what's going to be left at the end of our budget and stuff like that. Now, what's neat is if you had stuff down here, say you're doing this for every month. So this month, you made 2000 again. You still got 850 rent, but you only spent 225 on groceries and your power bill was 180. Now, if I want this to figure out the formula again, I can copy this cell, drag it down to that cell, and when I hit enter, it tells me how much money was left out of this month. So I'm just showing y'all like basic operations. Y'all, this Excel is going to be powerful. It's a powerful little tool if you ever get to using it, okay? Um, so the main thing I just wanted y'all to see that you do have access to it inside your email if you don't have it already, like a Microsoft Office already. You do get it through your email, okay? So do y'all think y'all can make them boards up for me next class? Now yes. I'll probably go tutor you through it again. Um, so what you wanna have ready, what we'll do, I'll do my chapter four stuff and then I'll give us a little break so that y'all can load your Excel up and then I'll walk you through setting them up and then I'm going to just put you in breakout rooms of two people each. So it might be Floyd against Alyssa, Tierra against Aiden, Jordan and Essini, Tennis and Presley and Tamara and all that, okay? I don't know how to pair y'all, but that's going to be your first activity. So, y'all got any questions? <laughs>